Do you know what's going on at Starbase? Well, stick around. We have all the highlights on the construction of Ship 37, the continuation of High Bay Demolition, and SpaceX crews hard at work down at the launch site, building out the new pads, tank farm, deluge system, and flame trench. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week on Friday morning, the main extendable boom for the High Bay Demolition Crane arrived at the build site. In relatively short order, the boom extended its legs to lift itself off the truck, and then the drive section of the crane pulled underneath as assembly got underway. Down the road over at the launch complex, it was business as usual as Rover 2 camera caught multiple sections of the new cryogenic piping being lifted into the farm for installation. That afternoon, a crane was spotted lifting one of the prefabricated double-walled steel plate sections into the flame trench for installation. Later, several additional sections of steel for the flame trench walls were delivered to the launch site. As the afternoon continued, additional crane parts arrived at the build site and were offloaded, including several lattice boom and jib pieces. Late that afternoon, crews began to unnest the jib pieces for the new crane and staged them for assembly as they worked to get the new equipment ready to assist in the demolition of High Bay. That night, the new chopsticks on the Pad B launch tower underwent a fresh round of testing. Over a nearly two-hour period, the arms were incrementally raised up the tower until they finally reached the top for the first time. After a short stay there, the arms were lowered back to the hard stops. Overnight, SpaceX moved a power and communications bunker down Highway 4 to the launch complex. The large prefabricated structure was brought on multiple transporters and parked next to the Starhopper in the lot across the street from the launch complex. Up the road at High Bay, showers of sparks could be seen raining down as demolition crews worked to remove the building's roof. On Saturday morning, the Barry crew was back to work assembling the crane's lattice boom extension and luffing jib. By mid-morning, the boom was partially raised to facilitate reeving of the crane's hook. Then, a short time later, the boom was raised up in the air next to the high bay for the first time. That afternoon, presumably following some tests and checkouts, the crane was lowered back to the ground to wait for demolition crews to be ready for its first lift. Down at the launch site, a new liquid oxygen pump was installed in the tank farm expansion. First, the sump was lifted in place, followed by the pump itself, and then finally the large motor. Saturday also saw another pair of steel wall sections lifted in place at the Pad B flame trench. That night, the newly delivered power and communications bunker was moved out of its parking spot next to Hoppy and brought across the street to the launch complex. This new building appears to have quite a collection of HVAC units on its sides. On Sunday morning, the bunker was shifted the last few feet and lowered into position. A few hours later, the Pad B chopsticks began to climb up the launch tower once again. Once the arms were up and out of the way, the Buckner crane lifted another section of prefabricated steel wall plating into the closer end of the flame trench. Up the road at the build site, a worker was seen climbing onto the luffing jib of the newly assembled Barry crane. Following his quick inspection, the crane raised its boom back into the Texas skies ready to work. Early on Monday morning, crews could be seen roping off some of the parking area next to Rover 2 in anticipation of work on the new plumbing being run to the pad. At High Bay, a manned basket was lifted by crane up to the roof, possibly indicating the demolition crews have taken the internal elevator out of service already. Around that same time, a truckload of pipes arrived and was offloaded along the roadside next to the launch complex for the previously mentioned plumbing work at this site. About an hour later, another section of the wall for the new flame trench was also delivered. Back at the build site, the crane removed part of a steel beam from the center of High Bay roof as demolition work continues. And less than a half an hour later, the crane lifted out the trolley for the building's bridge crane and set it down next to the bay. That afternoon at the launch site, a crane lifted another prefabricated cryogenic accessory skid into the tank farm. This skid, which included a large diameter basket strainer, valve, and 90-degree elbow was placed in front of one of the still empty pump stands. Meanwhile, Ship 37's forward dome section emerged from Star Factory and was taken across the ring yard and into Mega Bay 2 for stacking with the vehicle's nose cone and payload sections. Later, the high bay demolition crane lifted out the two bridge crane rails one after the other. They were placed on the ground next to the previously removed trolley. 
Overnight, several more basket strainer and valve skids were lifted and installed in the tank farm as SpaceX works around the clock to outfit the expansion. On Tuesday morning, Rover 2 camera caught some paving equipment rolling past the launch complex as road crews worked to complete the new roundabout on Highway 4 just past the tank farm. About an hour later, two 10-axle transporters arrived at the launch site and disappeared through the main gate. Later, a large diameter pipe manifold was also delivered and taken into the launch complex. With the bridge crane now removed, the demolition crane was back at work removing additional structural steel components that had been cut free of the building. Throughout the afternoon, the launch site continued to see steady work, with equipment installation at the tank farm, new prefabricated cryo skids arriving, and additional wall panels being installed in the flame trench. Late that afternoon, the chopsticks over at Pad A began moving up the launch tower. Once there, the arms paused for a bit before dropping back down to the hard stop at the bottom of the tower. Around that same time, the PA warned of imminent loud venting. For a few minutes, venting was seen and heard as SpaceX was likely performing tests on some of the recently installed equipment. That night, a peek inside Star Factory showed the progress that's been made in the recent weeks on the new wall going up to separate the triangular end of the building from the rest of it. Overnight, the two transporters that arrived at the launch site earlier were brought back out onto the road, now joined to make a long 20-axle transporter. Next, a new horizontal storage tank rolled down Highway 4 and arrived at the launch complex. After a brief pause to switch out the delivery transporter for the waiting SpaceX transporters, the tank was taken into the launch complex. While all this was going on, in the background, the final prefabricated basket strainer skid was lifted into place in front of the pump stands. About an hour before dawn, the previously delivered manifold was lifted and lowered for installation near the Deluge Farm. Later that morning, as demolition of High Bay continued, parts of the building's bridge crane were loaded on a truck and taken out of Starbase. Meanwhile, a concrete pump truck set up and began a pour on one of the upper levels of the gantry at the new launch pad. In the background, we could see that two additional pump trucks were already hard at work, one at the flame trench and one at the tank farm. And about an hour and a half later, the pours for the gantry and the tank farm were both wrapped up. With all the basket strainer skids now installed in front of the pump stands, work switched to the backside of where the pumps will sit, with prefabricated skids being set in their place. That afternoon, a crane was spotted lifting a new long section of pipe to the side of the Pad A launch tower. Even as SpaceX is actively building new launch infrastructure both here and in Florida, they continue to adjust and improve their active pad as well. Back at the build site, the demolition crane removed a large section of the wall from the top level of High Bay as the scrapping work shifts downward from the roof. Early that evening, the concrete pump truck working in the flame trench finally completed its work and packed up its boom following more than a 14-hour long pour. Switching over to Florida, on Friday, a short fall of Gravitas was returned to port with booster 1077 from the Starlink Group 12-25 mission. We can also see booster 1078 from the Starlink Group 12-16 launch being laid down on a transporter for its return to Roberts Road. On Saturday afternoon, Megan passed through Port Canaveral en route to the Banana River to offload its cargo, the recently returned Dragon Capsule Freedom, from NASA's Crew-9 mission. On Sunday morning, Doug departed from Port Canaveral in support of the NROL-69 launch. And about 30 hours later, Falcon 9 Booster 1092 lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 for the classified mission for the USS National Reconnaissance Office. Doug then returned with both of the recovered fairing halves from the mission late that next night. On Thursday, as work continues on the Starship pad at Launch Complex 39A, we could see movement of the chopsticks on the tower as they were moved into their closed position. This was likely done manually in order to facilitate the piling work for the flame trench at the base of the tower. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.